Hi, I'm Ray, G4 and SJ. Look what I've got here. Look at this. I'll show you a close up picture. The Nano VNA H. And it says on it, Nano VNA, very tiny handheld vector network analyzer. Very tiny. <laughs> it's pretty good actually. It's not in a case, unlike the, the H4. It's not in a, a plastic case, so you can actually see in there to the printed circuit board. But what I'm going to do is I'll show you how to set it up and how to use it for SWR. This is a 2.8 inch screen. Now don't be put off by the size. This is extremely powerful little device. Now what I'm going to do, first of all we're going to have a look at it. You can check SWR with this. You can also check the frequency of a quartz crystal. And as if by magic, I have here a bag of quartz crystals. Now crystals aren't always marked. There's a quartz crystal. I've got a whole bag full here. So you can use this little device to check the frequency of the crystal. You can use it to check a crystal filter. You know, for sideband, single side, for check a crystal filter. I'm not going to go through all the different things you can do with it. You could check the value of an inductor. If you've got an unknown inductor, check the value of that on here. You can check the resonant frequency of a tuned circuit. It goes on and on what you can do with this. But as I say, most people want this for SWR and it makes their SWR meter redundant. Right, let's have a look at the device close up. Okay, here it is. Let's have a look. Uh, this this is the little, the little wand, okay, for prodding the screen. A couple of leads here. There's a little couple of there that you get with it. Okay. Then you get three of these. The silvery colour one, stainless steel, is the load. Then you've got one there with a pin in the middle. That's the short circuit one. Then the one with nothing in the middle, that's the open circuit one. We'll come to all that in a minute. This one isn't in a plastic, that's what that's for, to prod the screen. This one isn't in a, a, a box, it's open there. Now what you have here, this is the on off switch on the top here, on off switch. That's the charging port there. There's a little toggle type wheel there. You can press it, okay, or flip it that way, or flip it that way. These are the two ports, channel zero and channel one quite a, a handy size I mean you can put that in your pocket now let me just show you a couple of things before I do anything else that's the on off switch turn it on there we are you've got that on the screen now what I'm going to do is set this up so we will need to put that in there okay in channel zero right before you do anything you want to let's get rid of that for a minute Bring up the menu just by tapping anywhere, calibrate, reset. Okay, that resets everything in case it's got something in its memory from the last time you used it. Okay, I'm now going to go back to stimulus. Stimulus, right, start. Now I want to check the SWR on my two meter aerial. So let's say, now two meters is 144 to 146 megs. So let's go 140 megs, okay, stop. Let's go to 150 megs, 150 megs. Okay, that's that. And down here it says start 140, stop 150. Go back here, go back, display, trace. Now I've already done this, we want the yellow trace okay and you want it on format swr now that now says up there channel zero swr okay go back here again let's go back calibrate calibrate open so we're going to connect the open circuit one of these do you remember these the open circuit one which is which is that one. So I'm going to put that on the end of the, the lead, which I've now done, and then press open. That's done that. Now it's saying it wants the short circuit one. 
So I'm going to put that on the end of the lead. There it is on the end. Short circuit. Press short. It now wants to load, which if you remember is the silvery colour one. Put the load on the end of the lead and press load. OK, now done. Now I want to save this. I'm going to save it in number one. Save in number one. There we are. And that's now done. That's now set up to read SWR on an aerial between 140 and 150 megs. So the next thing to do is to plug the aerial into it. Right, this is the 2 meter aerial, the 259 plug. I've got an adapter there into the lead, which goes into the unit. OK, to channel zero. Right, sorry about all these reflections, it's the lighting. Let's turn this on. Now I've connected the area already, so what we want to do is go here, recall. OK, we want to recall where we saved it. We saved it in one, didn't we? There's one. Tap the screen to get rid of the menu. Right, let's have a look what this says. This is 140 to 150 megs. This is the SWR. Now what I'm going to do, I want to find where the aerial is resonant. So if we go back to the menu, go back, go back, marker, search for minimum. You see that? It's looking for the minimum SWR and it's found it there. It's found it there. That's the minimum. Get rid of that. Right. The aerial is resonant on 142.4. Can you see 142.4 megs? The SWR is 1.02, 1.01, 1.02. That is extremely low SWR. The only thing is it's on 142 megs. And I'm operating, well, let's say 145 is the middle. So the little switch at the top here, this little one, move that, click it to the right, and you see the marker moving. There it goes we can get that to the right frequency up the top here there's the frequency so if I move the marker 143.4 let's keep going 144 megs 145 megs there we are that's the middle of the band and the SWR is 1.19 1.18 that's pretty good so you can see exactly what the SWR is over the entire 2 meter amateur band. Ideally, I would want the lowest SWR in the middle of the amateur band, wouldn't I? 145. It's, what was it, uh, 1.01 or something? I'm, I'm not bothered about that, 1.1 something, wasn't it? That's, that's close enough. I'm not taking the aerial down off its huge pole and fiddling about just for the sake of a little bit of reflective power like that. Now, I'll just show you this, that SO239 to the SMA, you don't get that. These are all over the internet. You can pick these up anywhere. And as you saw, that goes in there, then your aerial plugs into there. Or what if you've got, you might have an end connector, so you're going to get an adapter for that. So that's that. As I said earlier, that's the charging lead. Just stick that into a five volt phone charger. Off you go. And the whole thing comes in a little box like that. It's amazing. It is. Using the SWR meter, as we all have done since, well, since you know, 200 years ago, <laughs> this is great. But you've got to fire up the transmitter, adjust it. You think, right, the SWR is 1.3 to 1 on that frequency. You then got to change the frequency of the radio, check the SWR again, transmit again. It's, it's such a palaver. And all you have to do now is stick that into the aerial. Uh, it covers, what is it, 50 kilohertz up to, I think it's 3 gigahertz. I don't know. have to look on the uh, on the spec for that. Oh, here we are. Yeah, 50 kilohertz to 300 megs, 300 megs to 900 megs, 0.9 gigs, oh, to 1.5 gigahertz. And as I said, don't be put off by the size. It's perfectly, as you saw, it's perfectly easy to read that screen. No problem at all even with my old eyesight. <laughs> I often wonder, going back to the early, early days, the 60s, the 50s, how we did it. Well, people built their own SWR meters, didn't they? They built everything themselves. 
to show them something. Imagine taking this back to the 50s and saying, look at that. People wouldn't believe it. they say it's magic. <laughs> it is magic as far as I'm concerned. Excellent. So I now have the 2.8 inch screen and the 4 inch screen version. I collect these. I do. <laughs> you probably think I'm mad. I like these. I like these. They're brilliant. I mean, it doesn't make the SWR meter, you know, the old, the good old SWR meter. It doesn't make it redundant. You know, they still have their uses. Obviously, it's nice to see the reflected power on a meter. It's nice to see the reading on a meter, especially an analog meter. You can see what's going on if you're tuning something up. But uh, this sort of thing is great, if, especially if you're building an aerial. You know, you, you make your dipole, for example, then you think, I wonder where, where that's resonant. We can have a look on here. It just tells you the frequency. You don't have to work stuff out, which is good as you get old. There you are. Thanks for watching. I uh, look forward to the next video, which will be, I think, about what am I doing next? A triplexer for six metres, two metres and 70 centimetres. I've just fitted a triplexer to the bit of coax coming in from my tri-band aerial. So that'll be the next video. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Bye-bye for now.